What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to continue talking about how I think the console marketing for the Series X, S and the PS5 was not necessarily the most transparent to the consumers. What I mean by that is if you actually pay very close attention, a lot of what the console's capabilities were, were actually written on the box of both the PS5 and the Series X. Now, here's something about writing, you know, on your box as to the performance of, you know, your hardware. It's the fact that when you write something like this, which is what the 6750 XD is capable of, it says it does 1440 and you can actually run tests and metrics to show if it runs at 1440 or not, which for most of you I've shown you here, on the, you know, on the channel Gotham Knights, where I use the 6750 XD and I ran the game at 1440 and we were able to maintain 60 FPS. I locked the FPS to 60 just because that's where you actually need it. I know some people might say, well, you know, why not? Some people said, why not unlock the frame rate? I'm like, what is the point of unlocking the frame rate? Just leave it at 60 or 70 or whatever it is your CPU can do. And you'll be able to basically just enjoy the game. In fact, once you get past 60 FPS, for the most part, in these kinds of games, you don't necessarily notice the difference, except you were playing an FPS, which those are optimized so well, you can run 100 FPS if you actually did want. But at the end of the day, I think that performance actually lined up with exactly what it is that the, you know, uh, the device itself could pull off. And I paired it up with a uh, Ryzen 5500, which is a CPU that was like 100 bucks and it was able to get the job done. When you also come back and start looking, say, at even some other GPUs, like, say, the 6800 XD, this is a GPU that actually is very good at 1440, but is also OK at 4K. It is not necessarily going to be the greatest thing ever at 4K, but it will do 4K gaming. And even the 6750 XD that I just showed you is also capable of doing 4K. I showed that in a video just recently. Just look through my videos. I'm not going to link in the description, uh, you know, because that video is more than like I'm going to do a, re, uh, a restructure of that video. I'm actually wanting to do a much more uh, broader one. But if, you, if you're interested, you can go ahead and just check my last few videos. You should see it now. The crazy thing is, in this whole conversation, we have the Xbox Series X. This is a console that touts that it can do 4K 120 FPS. However, when you look through all of the caveats, the 4K 120 FPS has a fine print that is actually attached to it. This fine print, I think, was what I suspected the console manufacturer did not count on you looking at when they said that. They said 4K gaming at up to 120 FPS up to 120 FPS. Whereas even a graphics card that is more expensive than the Series X itself is saying 4K. Did not give you any FPS, just says you can do 4K. That's all this GPU's uh, you know, notification says to you. So the transparency in the marketing is actually quite off. I think the console manufacturers purposely use language that basically did not tell the audience or the consumer what it was that they were probably gonna go ahead and buy. And so at the end of the day, when we actually peel back the layers of what that box is and realize that, hey, what they're selling you is for the most part, a more expensive device that is not as performant, that is designed to lock you into an ecosystem, designed to make you spend more money in that ecosystem, you start to realize and ask yourself, well, why in the world am I going to be doing something like that? Even when on the PC side, we've memed things like 8K gaming. Many of you, you may or may not know, uh, 8K gaming is actually something that is, you know, I would say plausible. I wouldn't say necessarily something that we're already sitting on and having a blast about. If you go and look at the 4090, uh, Linus has a video where he actually did a test gaming at, four, at, a, at 8K, <laughs> which is insane. But the graphics card and its manufacturer said that it can do 8K. And the tests were run, the metrics were done, and it does game at 8K. In fact, I even did some myself because apparently Middle Earth and I don't have an 8K display. So I guess those results are probably going to be, you know, somewhere, you know, in the gutter because they don't necessarily have the display. But I did Middle Earth Shadow of, uh, you know, was it Shadow of, what was it? Mordor? Shadow of Mordor can actually run 8K. It will, it will do a 200% display. Uh, just based on the graphics card, and you'll be able to get 8K gaming out of it, which was actually quite interesting when I saw that this was a thing. You know, I went ahead and actually changed the settings and all of that pretty much worked out, but we're not necessarily capable of seeing this stuff with the console. Instead, what we have is hit or miss. What is going on overall? 
I think what's going on overall is basically the truth that the console manufacturers told us. But the only thing is they, they put it in such fine print that each game is going to behave very differently on any single piece of hardware. This is the reality. This is the truth. So it's one of these unexpected territories because you have thousands of video games that are run and released and all of them are developed under different circumstances, different pipelines, different things overall. Right now, I'm working on making my own video game. And I can tell you that <laughs> people that have worked on that project have literally worked on it from different corners of the earth, <laughs> okay, with their own different ideas, their own different individual, uh, you know, uh, ways of doing things that probably other people may disagree with. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to live with that product and ensure that it's the very best product based on the circumstances and methodologies and techniques that every single individual that contributed to that pro to this particular gaming project is, is able to bring to the table. There's not one way to fashion a video game. Add to that, the video game is going to be its own thing, which is going to be different from every other video game that you can find out there. So when you take all of this into consideration, every single video game is going to come with its own surprises and its own little, uh, you know, quirks. So performance is something that is very variable. It's not necessarily always going to be a one to one simply because of that. Now, not saying that the technology and the mechanics, you know, in some way have to be, you know, this kind of weird shift, shape shifting thing. No, they are mathematically calculated in terms of graphics and all of the stuff. But when the final product is put together, the game engines and all of the different things that are used to render, you know, the individual aspects of the game and program and code it will all translate differently to the hardware. So when I see the PlayStation 5 Pro marketing start to give all of this talk, I have to say what games have already been tested on the PS5 Pro? Because on the PC side, when new hardware is coming out. There's actually tests that go on that is actually done with games like Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty much the, the, the standard now for anything you want to test your game on if you're in, if you're making an NVIDIA GPU, right? And if you're making an AMD GPU or your AMG CPU, you're trying to bring it out, you have to use things like Call of Duty, you got to use all these other games. And so we use these metrics to be able to say, okay, because these games from the past have run at these performance modes on this new hardware, we can get a sense as to how the new hardware is going to work. Whereas with the console, it's not until the day you get it that you then fire up your game and then figure out if it's going to actually do that or not. Now, there is a possibility that they will do some metrics and bring, you know, and show the console on some old games. But at the end of the day, they're going to market the console with games that are friendly to those ecosystems. There might be the possibility that they use a third party game, but uh, we can't necessarily be certain about that. So I wanted to go ahead and make this video because I just think this is something that we need to, you know, pay very close attention to. And we need to continue to talk about because as these next, you know, refreshes come around, I think people can basically prep themselves up to the next generation, even with just a little bit of money, seeing that the technology is coming down in price, seeing that the market is changing very rapidly and more and more technology in this generation is going to be unleashed. The console market is not able to keep up in this, you know, very dynamic change of hardware and even software, because at the point that, you know, you get the new you know, consoles, a lot of games will be, will be pushing this new, uh, you know, the new stuff with the hardware. And who knows what the consoles are going to basically be bringing to the table. So unless the console manufacturers are willing to straight up go ahead and give you the PC experience in their ecosystem, it's going to always be a weird, you know, parity overall when it comes down to the whole, you know, the grand scheme of things. But this is pretty much my video. I want to go ahead and just showcase this stuff because it's one of those weird things that we don't necessarily talk about. But anyways, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.